Welcome to Virginia Tech, home to many incredible engineering buildings. This tour will give you a quick glimpse at the buildings that house our programs. First, we'll go to Hancock Hall. Hancock Hall was built in 1990 and renovated in 2002 to provide laboratories and a gas handling area for the materials engineering program. The College of Engineering Academic Affairs offices are located in this building, as well as the Center for the Enhancement of Engineering Diversity. The main atrium has plenty of space to study and work on group projects. Located on the top level of Hancock Hall is Phantom 4, a human-powered submarine design project from 2001 to 2003. Also on the top level of Hancock Hall is where you would go to participate in an information session for the College of Engineering. Next to Hancock is Randolph Hall. Randolph Hall was constructed in two sections. The west section was completed in 1952, and the east section was added in 1959. Randolph Hall houses the Aerospace and Ocean Engineering Department, as well as a six-foot-tall stability wind tunnel acquired by NASA in 1958. There are many research spaces in Randolph Hall, including the Frith Lab, which is a space designed to support first-year engineering students. Across the path from Randolph is Holden Hall. Holden Hall was originally constructed in 1940 and housed the Mining and Minerals Engineering Program and the Materials Science and Engineering Program. It is currently being renovated and reconstructed. Some new and improved building features will be a Center for Autonomous Mining and Robotics, a new computational space, and new labs dedicated to semiconductors, polymers, ceramics, and metals. The construction is expected to be completed in November 2021. Next to Holden is McBride Hall. McBride Hall was completed in 1971 with a 560-seat auditorium added in 1973, and the auditorium was recently renovated in 2015. McBride is an academic building that contains classrooms and offices, including the Department of Computer Science, as well as departments from other colleges. The building is a compass of sorts. Each of its entrances faces due north, south, east, and west. Across the street from McBride is Kelly Hall. Opened in 2009, Kelly Hall houses the Institute for Critical Technology and Applied Science, which supports and promotes cutting-edge research at the intersection of engineering, science, and medicine. The building includes engineering-led research laboratories, offices, and workspaces. Heading down the road from Kelly is Torgerson Hall. Torgerson Hall was completed in 2000. It houses offices, laboratory space, classrooms, space for televised distance learning, and two auditoriums. The main office for the Dean of the College of Engineering is in Torgerson Hall. The first floor includes an atrium with computer hookups that serves as electronic study courts, and the building joins Newman Library via an enclosed bridge that spans Alumni Mall and provides reading room space. On the drill field, we'll arrive at Patton Hall. The first story of Patton Hall was completed in 1926, and three additional floors were added three years later. It houses classrooms, most faculty offices, and administrative offices of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Heading away from the drill field, we'll get to Bishop Favreau Hall. Bishop Favreau Hall was completed in December 2007 and serves the facility needs of the Department of Building Construction and the Myers Lawson School of Construction. The building houses administrative and faculty offices and provides classroom space, seminar rooms, and studios. The building itself was designed to be a teaching tool. The structural elements that are usually hidden behind walls and ceiling panels in other buildings are exposed and labeled. Heading down Perry Street, next is Whittemore Hall. The first three floors of Whittemore Hall were completed in 1971, and three additional stories were completed in 1985. Whittemore Hall is used for academic classrooms and laboratories, largely for the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. The third floor is surrounded by a large outdoor patio with several picnic benches and connects via bridges to Durham Hall and Hancock Hall. Next to Whittemore is Durham Hall. 
Durham opened to classes in spring of 1998 and contains laboratories, offices, and classrooms for various departments in the College of Engineering, particularly the Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering. Across the parking lot from Durham is Goodwin Hall. Finished in June 2014, Goodwin Hall is the flagship building for the College of Engineering. It houses 40 instructional and research labs, 8 classrooms, the Quillen Family Auditorium, and 150 offices for several engineering departments including chemical engineering, engineering education, and mechanical engineering. Goodwin Hall is a groundbreaking experiment to measure even the smallest vibrations made inside the building. The project is designed as a test bed to track data related to building design and security, occupancy monitoring for emergency response, structural health monitoring, and more. One of the structure's main attractions has been the 14,000-pound Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 jet engine hanging above the first-floor atrium. The engine, a donation by the London-based engine builder, is a learning tool for engineering students. Heading diagonally across campus to the other side of the drill field, we'll get to Sites Hall. Sites Hall is an academic building on the Ag Quad and home to the Department of Biological Systems Engineering and houses many classrooms and laboratories. Thank you for joining us on our quick tour of our main engineering buildings. We hope to see you on campus soon. Go Hokies!